Hey Daniela, good morning. Good morning, TGIF. Hey Toya, Toya, good morning, good morning. It's great to see you this morning, TGIF. How y'all doing on this amazing Friday? Ooh, I'm so glad that this week is behind us. Lord knows. Some of us, I know it probably has been a kind of a rough week. Um, but thank God we made it. Hey, Anastasia, good morning, good morning. Fruitful Friday, I love it. You always come on with the best uh, ways to just greet us and get our morning started. God bless you, beautiful. It's awesome to see you. <clears throat> I am starting my watch party. So y'all just give me a second. But as I'm getting things set up, let me know how you're doing this morning on this amazing, fabulous Friday. Um, and also, click share and invite others to join us as you're waiting to get started here. Y'all ready to get into the Word this morning? I am so excited. I just believe that God is going to speak to our hearts this morning. So as we wait for everybody else to come on, I'm going to go ahead and just open us up in prayer. Father God, we just come to you this morning so grateful, so thankful, God, for another day. We're thankful, God, that we made it through this week, God. I just know that, you know, there are some that will be on here this morning. It's been a rough week. Uh, they've been going through challenges, whether it's financial, whether it's emotional, uh, whether it's physical for healing in their body. Father God, there's just so much going on. But we thank you, God, that none of this have caught you by surprise. We thank you, God, that this did not knock you down off your throne, but you still sit high and look low. And we thank you for that, God. I pray, Father God, for every person under the sound of my voice, God, that during these times, we will do whatever it takes to draw closer to you, Father God, to get into your presence, God. Forgive us, God, for where we still have been looking to other things and, you know, thank God for stimulus checks and thank God for, for other forms of relief. And But, Father God, you are our provider. You are our healer. You are our source of joy. You are our source of strength. So, Father God, forgive us for if we've been looking to the government or looking to anything else uh, to give us the hope that we can only get from you today. Father God, we thank you for keeping us this week. Some of us have come up against some obstacles and some things that have tried to trip us up and some things that have challenged our faith but thank god we made it god we are still here we are still doing our best to stay connected to you we are trusting you we are hoping in you and so now father god we just we just are gathering together as as your church as the body of christ as your sons and your daughters we're coming together to lift up your name and to lift up each other to encourage each other through your word and through uh, through prayer god thank you holy spirit for being in the midst of all that's going to be said and done today i ask you holy spirit to hide me and let not Anne be seen, but let God be seen. Let, let God be heard. Let the word come forth in such a powerful and relevant way. A rhema word for those who are seeking answers, who are seeking confirmation, who are seeking guidance. Father God, come forth for your people today. We know you will. Father God, just have your way on this live this morning. 
Bring them in, God, from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Let somebody just be scrolling down Facebook today and see that one of one of the encouragement and prayer family people have uh, shared the video and let them pop in and 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 you know be a part of what we're doing and receive hope today, God. So we just thank you and praise you. And we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hey, Sister Denise, it's great to see you. I'm glad that you are ready. Praise God. Hey, Jeanette, good morning, good morning. Hey, Sister Lucy, you made it. Praise God. It's good to see you, beloved. Hey, Sister Suzette, it's awesome to see you as always. Hey, Jamie, it's great to see you. Amen. So we are ready to just go ahead and jump into this word today. I'm excited about what God has kind of, you know, nestled in my heart to share with you. And, and I just don't believe it's an accident that you are here this morning. Somebody say, it's not an accident that I'm here. I mean, we're here just about every morning and... um and you know some mornings you may tune in and some mornings you don't but i just believe that you are here by uh by god's design uh divine design amen hey tangia it's good to see you beloved i'm glad you joined us today so listen this morning we are in the book of john chapter four hey sister veronica i see you coming on i'm so glad to see you um uh, John chapter 4 verses 6 through 16 and here come uh, Priscilla I don't know if you all know but Veronica and Priscilla are sisters and I just adore them I've met Priscilla but I haven't met Veronica yet but Veronica and I we've met many times in the spirit amen so I just I love those two so anyway um, hey sister Irene good morning it's awesome to see you uh, John chapter 4 6 through 16. Thank you so much for putting that up. My beautiful sister Suzette, I appreciate you. So you all, this is a very familiar passage, and um, but I believe that God wants to use what happened over 2,000 years ago to speak to our heart today. Amen? Do you believe that God's word is still alive? It is living, and if it meant something back then, it still means something today? I believe that with all of my heart. So we are in John 4, 6 to 16. Hear the word of God. It says, hey, Sister uh, Regina, good morning. It says, hey, Sister Kelly, good morning. It's great to see you all. It says, Jesus arrived at the Samaritan village near the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph long ago. And tired by his long journey, he sat on the edge of Jacob's well. He sent his disciples into the village to buy food, for it was already afternoon. And soon a Samaritan woman, somebody say a Samaritan woman, a Samaritan woman, y'all know the story, came to draw water and Jesus said to her, give me a drink of water. Surprised, she said, why would a Jewish man ask a Samaritan woman for a drink of water? Some uh, translation tells us because Jews had nothing to do with the Samaritans. And especially a, a male rabbi talking to this Samaritan woman. So she was surprised. And so Jesus replied. He said, if you only knew who I am and the gift that God wants to give you. Somebody say the gift that God wants to give me. There is a gift that God wants to give you. In the name of Jesus. He said, if you only realize who I am and the gift that God wants to give you, you'd ask me for a drink. And, and when you ask me, I would give you <laughs> living water. So the woman replied, but sir, but sir, you don't even have a bucket. And this well is very, very deep. So where do you find this living water? Do you really think that you're greater than our ancestor Jacob who dug this well and drank from it himself along with his children and livestock? And, and Jesus answered, if you drink from Jacob's well, you'll be thirsty again and again. 
Some of us understand what it's, it's like to have a need and, 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 and have it met temporarily, but then realize that it really wasn't met at the core. It was just a temporary fix. Somebody say a temporary fix. See, when Jesus comes to, to deal with our situation, he's not trying to deal with things on a temporary level. He's trying to do things on an eternal level. And that's why some of us right now, we, we, you, you know, we, we're frustrated because you whatever felt good yesterday is not feeling good today and whatever worked yesterday isn't working today or whatever worked last week because it's temporary somebody say I want what's eternal I want a, 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 an eternal fix I don't want what's temporary and so Oh, this is so good. So he said, if you drink from Jacob's well, you'll be thirsty again and again. But anyone who drinks the living water I give them, they will never thirst again and will be forever satisfied. I don't know about you, but I want to be forever satisfied. Come on, somebody. For when you drink the water I give you, it becomes a gushing fountain of the Holy Spirit springing up and flooding you with endless life. This is so good. And the woman replied, <laughs> she said, well, let me drink that water so I, I'll never be thirsty again and I won't have to come back here. See, listen, she was, oh, help me, God. The place that she was in, uh, the physical place also matched where she was emotionally. It was a well. She was she was running dry. Anybody ever ran dry? And so what was going on in her emotions led her to the physical place that symbolized, help me, Holy Ghost, what was happening in her emotionally and spiritually. So she was saying, you know, this place, I, I don't want to come back to this place of depression. I don't, help me, Holy Ghost. I don't want to come back to this place of lack. I don't want to come back to this place of frustration. I don't want to come back to this place of offense. I don't want to come back to this place of hurt. I don't want to come back to this place of pain. I don't want to come back to this place of loneliness. So what, what can I do to, to not have to come back here? But oftentimes what we're asking God is just for a temporary fix. That's why we got to be careful even sometimes the relationships help me holy ghost that we uh that we establish the relationships the people that we connect to during a time of need good morning beautiful auntie kathy uh, we got to be careful who we connect with, what we connect with during a time that we feel like we are thirsty, during a time <laughs> that we are feeling lonely, during a time that we are feeling frustrated. We have to be careful. She said, what do I need to do to not have to come back to this place? And then we all know Jesus' response. He says, go get your husband. <laughs> and bring him back here. Listen, this morning, I just want to talk to you briefly about a divine setup. Somebody say it's a divine setup. It's a divine setup. You understand that she was set up by God, just like I believe many of you this morning. I'm not sure what you thought you tuned in for. And this is why I shared with you all, go ahead and click share and put this on your timeline. Somebody is about to have a divine setup and, and it would be awesome if you could be the vessel that would point that person who is seeking God to find him this morning because you shared this time that we have together. It's a divine setup. When you read more about this, this, this encounter, when you study it more, right, you will find out that there is a more logical way uh, for Jesus to get to where he was going. In other words, logically speaking, uh, geographically speaking, going this way didn't make any sense. This was a detour. Somebody say a detour. This this was a, a kind of a out of the logical way. This this is this is not uh, if, if we were to look at Jesus's day and and how things seem to be charted out. This wasn't even on the radar. <laughs> 
It wasn't the most traveled way to get to where Jesus needed to go, but Jesus made a detour. I believe that this morning, uh, Jesus has made a detour to come to meet many of us here who are on this live this morning, who are in need of his personal attention, who are in need of a a one-on-one with the Lord. (laughs) who are in need of of having just some intimate, some true intimate time with God. And even though we are sheltered in place and all this other stuff right here, we're still allowing other new distractions. Help me, Holy Ghost. We're still allowing the... Now, you know, we're at home and we have all this time, but we're inundated with CNN or Fox News. We're inundated watching all the updates. We're inundated, you understand? So we're still kind of low-key distracted, even though we, quote-unquote, have all this time on our hands. But can I tell you that if you stopped into this live this morning, that you have been set up. It is a divine setup. You are not here by accident. You are here by God's design. And Jesus knows what we need. And so if he needs to make a detour, if he, it, listen, if Jesus needs to stop everything else, if he will create a, a, a moment in time that, that he will come and meet with us and he will have the conversation conversation that needs to be had. Amen. And listen, and like this woman, we have to be careful. Somebody say, I got to be careful. I got to be careful. We have to be careful that when this moment is created, that we don't miss it. When this moment is created, that we are ready to respond. When this moment is created, help me, Holy Ghost, that we are ready to be real. Somebody say, I got to be real. I got to keep it real. Because see, that's what Jesus was after. Because understand that this woman, the time that she showed up at the wedding, well is when nobody else was there and so uh she she was showing up at a time where she could be herself and not have to worry about what other people um <laughs> was thinking what other people was saying you understand and so Jesus caught her at a moment that that she could be real with him that that all the noise was canceled help me holy ghost And so Jesus will will make a detour. He will come right to where we are. Because, you know, sometimes we be running from the Lord. Can we just be honest? You understand? Well, Sister Ann, I don't run from God. Well, yes, sometimes we do. Because you wake up and you know that, you know, that you have enough time to get into the word. You know you have enough time to do your devotion. But you pick up your phone and you start responding to text messages. You pick up your phone. You start looking at TikTok videos. Help me. Holy Ghost, you start scrolling down Facebook and Jesus is trying to have an encounter. Jesus is trying to have a real conversation, right? And so we can miss it. So like this woman, when this moment is created, we need for our hearts to be available. Say, say, Lord, help my heart to be available. When you have made an intentional, it's a divine appointment. Help us to not be too busy. Help us to not be too distracted. Uh, Help us to not be too prideful and help us to be willing to keep it real. I do believe that during these times that we're in right now of, of uh, you know, quarantine and, and curfews and shelter in place and, and all of that, that Jesus is trying to have a divine encounter. He's trying to set some things up. She was at the well, y'all. <laughs> At, at noon, in the afternoon, when the sun was high, it was hot. And this is contrary to the time that other people came to feed their livestock, to get water. Everybody else came in the morning. She showed up when nobody else was there. So a couple of things I want to say to you about this, this, this divine setup. If you're ready, say ready. Just a couple of things. We can look at this woman's situation and we can say, God, what are you trying to show me? Just say that to the Lord right now. Holy Spirit, what are you trying to show me? What do you want me to get out of this? So the, the first thing I want you to, to recognize and to see is that Jesus met her at her place of avoidance. 
Somebody say her place of avoidance. See, when where, where, where Jesus met her, she was avoiding a lot of other things. <laughs> she was avoiding her current situation. Um, she was avoiding uh, the people that who would normally be at the well. And so I just want you to ask yourself this morning, this is just a, a check, a, a gut check. This is a, 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 what, a checkup from the neck up. This is, this is self-introspection time. This is self-reflection time. What have you been avoiding? What, what have you been in denial about? What are you going through, listen, that you don't necessarily want other people to know? <laughs> um, or, here's the deal, because in her situation, who, Lord have mercy, there were some things that people knew about her, but there were some things people didn't know in, in, in other words <laughs> oh my god y'all pray for your girl right here people knew what they saw you understand and sometimes people can see some things and draw some conclusions that they really because they really 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 don't know what's going on so not only is she trying to avoid what the people were seeing in the natural, but she was also trying to avoid what people could really see if they really got to know her and understand why she was doing some of the things that she was doing, understand her struggle. See, so another thing that she, not only was she just trying to avoid the people uh, from, un, from seeing her situation, but she was also trying to avoid what people thought they knew. She was trying to avoid the people that were ridiculing, the people that were talking about her, the people that were judging her, the people that wasn't walking in her shoes, but all they saw was her footprints. Help me, Holy Ghost. You understand? And 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 so maybe some of you, uh, there's some folk or there's some situations or there's some events or there's something going on that you are trying to avoid because of the people's response, because some Folk just don't understand. They just can't relate. They so busy criticizing. They so busy judging. Like, mm, here she go again. Uh-huh. I always knew she had it in her. I always knew he would end up like this. I always knew. I always knew. And so what she didn't want to face, what she didn't want to deal with, is what the people thought they knew about her based on what they were seeing. Can I just talk to somebody this morning? What are you going through <laughs> that you don't necessarily care for other people to be in your business, but the reality is, is that it is so much deeper than what they know, but they, they just don't have the understanding They maybe they really don't care. Maybe some people would rather see you down than see you up. Help me, Holy Ghost, right? You know what, what, yeah, that's right, Sister Anastasia. She said, hashtag running from critics. I'm trying to tell you. And so the question we need to ask ourselves this morning is who you've been running from and why are you running? What are you trying to avoid? Because whatever your answer is, that place where you still have that deep hurt, that place where you still have that deep disappointment that you don't think that you can uh, can, can, you can verbalize to God that, 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 that you understand? Because some of you think that God can't handle your truth, but can I tell you, he can handle your truth today if you don't, if, if you would just show up to, to the divine appointment and just be honest with him. So some of you right now, you, 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 oh, help me, Holy Ghost. You understand what I'm saying? You are avoiding some things. You 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 are avoiding some people, but that that place that you are avoiding, that thing that you are avoiding, that thing you don't want to look at face to face, whatever that is, that right there, beloved, is where Jesus wants to meet you. It's a divine setup. This is your setup today. So you can go on and turn off the, the TV. You can go on and turn off, the, put your phone on silence. You can go on and just shut down some things. 
because this is your setup. Listen, there are some things that God wants to deal with you one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. There are some things that God wants to work through together with you. That, listen, that you've been trying to do on your own. That you've been trying to get your own water at your own time. Help me, Holy Ghost. You've been trying to do things your way. And there's some things that you cannot do outside of the power of God. And that's why Jesus showed up. That's why you're on this live today. That's why he has me sharing this message because this is your setup. This is your well. Help me, Holy Ghost. You understand? This is your place of surrender. This is your place of admitting that you need more than what you've been getting. Can I just say that again? <laughs> That your well, this well that you are, that Jesus is drawing you to, this well that Jesus has made a detour to come and meet you at. This is your place of surrender where to Jesus you can admit that in all the things that you have been acquiring and all the people that you are connected to and all the Bible study that you've been leading and all the Facebook live that you've been watching and all the stuff that you've been doing, this is your place of admitting that you are really not getting what you really need. It's a divine setup. I pray that the Holy Spirit is already dealing with some of you because you recognize that there are just some things that you need to come face to face with God about. And can I tell you something? Uh, don't you subscribe to it that you can't be honest with God. The Bible tells us that God is looking for those who will worship him in spirit spirit and those who will worship him in truth. And so when you go into your time with God, when you accept that appointment at the well and you begin to have a conversation with God, you need to be real with him. Even if that means that you might be low key upset with God, I said it, that you might be disappointed in the way that God allowed something to work out or he didn't allow it to work out. You might be upset at a door that God closed and it was for your good. But because you wanted it so bad, you feel like God is punishing you. But yet God is not punishing you. He's protecting you. But you got to go in and you got to go talk to him. And you got to say, Daddy, help me understand. Because I don't want to walk around with this low-key offense, this low-key hurt, this low-key disappointment. Some of y'all right now, you're disappointed that God has not moved on your spouse, that he has not moved on your son, moved on your daughter, moved on your job situation. Man, you don't know what God is doing behind the scenes. And you don't know the big setup. You don't see the full picture. But because we want what we want, when we want it, how we want it we're upset with God but can I tell you this morning God can handle that conversation in fact he's been waiting for you to be honest so he can tell you what's really going on here I gotta move on the other thing listen help me Holy Ghost that Jesus asked her for a drink of water Listen, when she, when it, he, he said to her, listen, that if you knew who I was and if you knew the gift that I was trying to get you, you would be asking me for living water. And guess what? She missed that because you know what she did? She turned around and she said, well, um, you're talking about giving me water, but I don't, I don't see no bucket. You know, I, I, with my little natural mine and my limited understanding and even though you're you're speaking spiritual stuff but i just don't grasp that so in the natural i'm trying to figure out how you gonna do it <laughs> i'm not i'm not just gonna receive it by faith I, I gotta figure this thing out that's some of us right now that that you you missing what god's trying to do because you're too busy <laughs> You too busy trying to figure out what God is doing, how he going to do it, when he going to do it, through whom he going to do it. You, you, you done missed the whole thing. You understand what I'm saying? You, 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 are, you are so uh, busy assessing everything in the natural. But what God is trying to do is supernatural. Somebody say supernatural. 
You understand? Uh, what God is trying to do is so, ooh, it is above your pay grade, y'all. You understand what I'm saying? We are so busy trying to bring heaven down and put it in an earthly box so that we can understand. Because listen, if we understand, then we want to control. Can I say that again? That the, the, the primary reason why we as human beings want to understand something is so that we can control it. And so what Jesus is speaking to her is spiritual. What, uh, what God is trying to do in your life is supernatural. It, it, it goes beyond your limited understanding. But because we're stuck in our limited understanding, then our response will also be limited. We're not going to respond by faith. We're not going to get out of our comfort zone. We're not going to let God be God because we're still trying to put his answer in our box. We're trying to focus on how and what. And not only focus on it, we're trying to tell God. Even our prayers, we got to be careful that our prayers are not manipulative prayers. We got to be careful that in our prayers, we're not trying to treat God like a genie in a bottle. Three wishes and two wishes and blowing out the candles. We got to be careful that even when we pray, that we may ask him for what we desire, but at the end of that, dot, 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 but not my will be done, your will be done. God, your will might be that I can't get that car. I may have to take the bus. I may need to walk. God, your will might be that I might need to be a cashier for a minute because I'm trying to be a manager, but I don't really know how to treat folk. I don't even know how to serve because I'm so busy wanting to be served. God, maybe I need to be at that lower pay grade because I need to learn how to submit to authority because I'm not even listening to you. Help me, Holy Ghost. But we got to trust God in this thing, y'all. And we got to be real. And we got to be real. Like the woman, he said, go get your husband. She was trying to fix a problem. <laughs> she was trying to fix her problem through men. And if any of you have ever walked in or received any deliverance or understood things like soul ties and understand the, the daddy issues that us girls can have and, and what it can cause us to look to and look for. If you've ever understood that, I can tell you that that woman was not with all those men because she just likes sex. She was searching for something. She was looking for something much deeper. And Jesus showed up at the well. Not not to, not to fix her man problem, but to deal with her heart problem, to deal with the place where the void really was. See, that water that she was drinking, it was just a, a temporary fix. It didn't get to the heart of the matter. So what is it that God is trying to deal with you at the heart of the matter today? What have you been avoiding? What have you not been fully admitting? What have you been trying to do within your own power? Where have you been trying to tell God what to do and trying to control the circumstances? All of that. Somebody say all of that right there. Some of you upset with God and you're too scared to admit it. Go on and admit it because God already knows. He's just waiting for you to be honest. And say, yeah, God, I ain't gonna lie. I, I'm kind of disappointed because I've served you. I've been praying. I've been fasting. I've been doing this. I've been doing that. And I can't believe that you still didn't do that for me. And then when I look at so-and-so down there, they ain't even calling your name. And here I am just making, you know, and, and, and you, you look like you blessing her. She done got this and she done that. And it, oh my goodness, you keep allowing this, this persecution to come at me. I mean, I'm the only one in my family saved and, and I'm trying to help other people get saved and I'm trying to bring my mama them and I'm trying to bring my son and all I get is persecution all I get is is clap back all I get is all that talk right there all I get is they think they say I think I'm better than anybody this is all I get God and God wait wait I need you to have my back my, my, you understand what I'm saying all of that <laughs> just you, you just you just you just you just you just gotta give that to God and you gotta have that for real conversation with God 
Man, you think that God's going to want you asking you to come and have a for real conversation and he not ready to have a for real conversation with you? Because see, the, the, a lot of the stuff we dealing with is surface. Somebody say it's surface. God's trying to go beneath the surface. <laughs> God's trying to go deeper. You understand? That's right, Anastasia. Come on. Yeah, right? It, it, it's, it's time to be transparent with God. So it's my prayer that this morning, and I said it earlier, and I'm going to say it again. If this message is ministering to you, share it. Even if it's not, share it. You know why? Because just because you're not experiencing this doesn't mean that all them 2,000 friends you got, 500 friends you got, that there isn't somebody on there right now that needs to know that Jesus is willing to make a detour. What's today? On April 17, 2020, that he is willing to make a detour, that he is willing to stop everything he's doing to come right now and to meet with them personally to talk with them one-on-one -on -one, to have that for real conversation that lets them know that listen baby you've been trying to fill your life with all these things you've been trying to take care of matters this way but I came today to tell you that the way that I'm about to fix this the way that I'm about to heal you the way I'm about to provide for you that there is nothing or nobody that can do this until you come to me and be honest about the need and I can show you your real need. And not only can I show it to you, says the Lord, but I can handle it. I can answer it. I can provide for it. I can make a way for it. I can heal it. I can release it. I can attach it. I can detach it. I can make it happen. I can close the door. I can shut it down. I can open the door. See, this is God speaking. That's right, Sister Daisy. God's trying to take us deeper. Deep calls unto deep. That's why we're talking about the well. Father God, we thank you for this word this morning. I pray, Father God, that this word goes out like a healing bomb. Let it go out and touch every person right at the core of the place of pain, of the place of hurt, of the place of disappointment, of the place of frustration. Father God, touch right now in the name of Jesus. Heal right now in the name of Jesus. Help your son, help your daughter understand they cannot do this apart from you. We need you, God. We need for you to reveal so you can heal. We need for you to reveal so we can allow you to heal. Father God, I pray that just like this woman at the well, that though her conversation started off in the natural and she was assessing everything with all the knowledge and that she thought she had about the well and all that, Father God, arrest us, God. Show us that, that we what, what the stuff we think we know pales in comparison to what we need to know about you and who you are and what you've done, the provision you have made for us to walk in our healing, for us to walk in our deliverance, for us to walk in our freedom, for us to obtain salvation so we will spend eternity with you. Speak to our hearts today, God. I pray that every person under the sound of my voice, as you hear this message, that you will repent of anything or anyone else that you have allowed to be a God, little G, in your life, that you have looked to them, looked to a person, looked to a title, looked to something else to fix you, to heal you, to make you whole other than God. We repent right now in the name of Jesus. We come to the well. We show up today, God, because we recognize that we need you. We need you to take us deeper than the surface, deeper than what everybody else has been seeing or what people think they see. Take us, God, even to the place that some of us don't even know because we've tucked the, the pain so far away. We've tucked it so deep, but you've pricked it this morning, God. And because you have touched it, we want you to touch it all the way and heal us in the name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you that this word has gone out. It will not return to you empty or unaccomplished. It will successfully do what you sent it out to do. We bless you and we praise you in Jesus' name.
message has me just a little bit emotional. And that's because I understand. There was a time in my life that I had a need that was a lot deeper than the things that I was trying to fill it with. And so it is my prayer that this will be eye-opening, if not for everybody, just one. And that this is the day <laughs> um, where you will allow God to do what only he can do. I love you all. I, I thank you for your prayers, your words of encouragement. Um, I thank you for sowing into our ministry in the different ways that you do. I thank you for believing in the Jesus in me and allowing me the privilege and the honor uh, to speak into you. I thank you, God, that your hedge of protection is around every person under the sound of my voice. Love you too, Toya, Toya. Thank you, God, that no sickness, no illness, no virus, no plague, no infirmity can come near us, <laughs> can come near our family, come near our homes, come near our belongings. We thank you, God, that even in the midst of all of this, that as your sons and as your daughters, we are still going to flourish and our purpose shall not be stopped. In fact, it's just being refueled. Amen. I love you all. And I pray God's abundant blessing over your day. Thank you, Sister Daisy. I received that in Jesus' name. I love you all. Please don't forget to click share. And have a fabulous, fantastic Friday and an even better weekend. Amen. I love you all. See you on Tuesday. Thank you for all of your prayers. Thank you, Sister Regina. God bless you all.